This video is sponsored by Thea Study, the largest native AI study platform in the world. Check out Thea Study with the link in the description. Today we're going to do some robot ratings and if you'd like to see your robot be rated by us and give some suggestions by us, then you should join our server and you can post it into the robot ratings channel. So to start off, we have a quite an interesting robot here. So what I see on here is actually a arm. He said that it worked very well and that would be really helpful for Gold Rush just uh, getting that advantage so that way you can start off with a strong lead with those top rings, which will not only help you ensure auto, but just help you throughout the entire match. Yeah, I mean, looking at this mechanism, I see how it works. This piston pulls backwards, which uh, uses these gears here to gain a small leverage here on this smaller gear, right? And then this would just swing downwards and they have another piston here mounted on this channel here. And this would in turn just grab onto that goal, right? This would swing down and grab onto it. Yeah, no, they get a huge range of motion doing it that way rather than just attaching the piston to the C-channel. Yeah, and honestly, I feel like this might even tilt it upwards. What do you think? Because I can see this under, this might act similarly to the, the Ben uh, Pybotics mech where the goal slides under here and this uses this piston to just uh, press the goal upwards. I would assume so because that, yeah, that just would prevent other people from grabbing it before them or being able to grab it while they're still in the middle, decelerating backwards. Yeah, I really like this mech. I feel like this is a great addition to honestly any robot at this point, because it's not super heavy, and honestly it gives you more, it just gives you more abilities, right? Because you can even, even, I've said many times, right? Put a BarkBot's uh, scoop on this as well, and get rid of those corners. So I feel like this is a definitely a must have on your robot. Mm -hmm. Some other things I see on this robot is, I see a, a hook intake right pretty standard and a 450 rpm drivetrain but one thing that i do recognize that's kind of unique are these wall roller or are these wall rollers I right say that, yeah. yeah so these are ball bearings and i feel like uh a lot of teams have been using gears or even the pulleys right but one thing i've noticed with pulleys or throughout the years is that pulleys are really easy to break they're really easy to snap and honestly i feel like just Stay away from pulleys, right? If you want to do wall gliders, I feel like either a 36 teeth low strength or these ball bearings are your best choice, right? The only thing I'd say about the ball bearings is they're they're going to be heavier than your gears. I think on our world's uh, robot we ran sprockets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. Around them, they worked fine. Yeah, for sprockets, I think the for the uh, smaller versions, I think the 16th is a good choice because that's around the size of the 36. So you just look for sprockets that are around that size. And a small tip that I have is you can put the chain around the sprockets, right? And that makes it more circular and it helps you glide better on the walls. But one thing I did notice is their brain is kind of vulnerable. It's, it's on the very side and I mean, I can't really tell if it's how close it is to the edge, but that's just something to be mindful of. Make sure your brain's kind of protected so that way it can't get broken. Yeah, I mean, I feel like a good placement would be like right here, right? Like right here facing the back if they can fit it here. But I don't know if they can. I feel like if they can add one more cross brace here, it help out the overall structure support and also allows for brain placement. I don't know how... It's a standoff crossbar right there. If they replace it with the C-channel, they yeah. can mount their profit. And next up, we have 2145Z's robot. And I mean, this is a very good looking pink robot. It's very similar to what they they posted uh, very early season, except for with the change of having a hood intake. Uh, the only thing I don't like about hood intake is it makes, from what uh, I know, redirect a little bit harder to do. But they didn't use redirect, so that wasn't a problem for them. One thing I'd like to note about your redirect direct statement, right, is that you don't actually need to have a redirect on a hood. You can instead do what the team we saw yesterday 18522R did, or like 360X did, right? With their uh, flip over two bar, which I feel like works extremely well because you don't have to have to wait for all that time for that uh, ring to come back through and fall back into your redirect system, right? All you have to do is just intake and then flip it around and then go and then you're scoring, right? Yeah, I completely forgot about that robot. Yeah, to be honest, I feel like that's my favorite type of high stake mech as of now because of just how reliable it looks at least we'll have to see in tournaments though how it does but honestly looking at 360x this robot i feel like 
it was very reliable and I haven't seen their high sync mech, like the actual loading part itself fail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and other than this, I feel like the standoff bracing here is pretty clean, but I feel like it might be a little too too extra. Oh, unless uh, this is their hang, but I don't think this is their hang. Their hang, I think, is right here on their yeah. on their on their arm. Yeah, on their. I guess, it's, I guess it's just some standoffs or something. Yeah, overall, very very nice robot. Yes, very sad pink. to see it go out in R sixteen though. Very sad. Next up, we have three sixty X. So this is mm -hmm. one of my favorite robots of the season. I think, if not my favorite one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And looking at here, what do you see? I mean, the the backpack was a really cool concept. It didn't turn out being as effective as they hoped, but it was a really cool idea that they had very early on. Um, they were able to use the um, their their arm for just general um, wall stakes, which was the because of their like two stage clamp was very very useful. I would assume. I mean, just scoring those wall stakes very, very fast because you can just, like the the China video, they can just intake into their um, cage and then just throw them onto the wall stakes, which is really convenient. Yeah, right. I also think that. And some other things I've noticed is these uh, poly pieces here for their sprockets, right? One thing that I noticed the uh, more teams are doing now is just reducing the amount of cancer levering they have, right? Because for our bots, I remember that during uh, tipping point spin up, right? We had a lot of cancer lever stuff on the bots. And honestly, that causes a lot of issue, right? Because if it get, ever gets hit and it gets bent, then you have, you're gonna have a lot of friction issues to fix, right? And that's just gonna be a pain to deal with. So I feel like this is a really safe way and really light way to take care of that problem. Oh, something that I just noticed was, is is their entire hood passive? It doesn't look like it has any flex wheels on it. Yeah, I think so. They have these poly pieces that makes the, I guess that makes there be less friction with the rings, but I think that's about it. I think there's the bands here. I, I don't think I've seen that before, other, other than... Well, it is pistonized, uh, though. Of oh, course, it is. yeah. Well, that not that just to... Um, the backpack. Yeah, that's just for backpack. Yeah. Very, very solid robot. I like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like even though backpack might not be the play later on, this type of uh, wall stake mech would still be really good. Yeah. And also talking a little bit more about their back clamp, about how their back clamp can still hold the goal while it's in its down position is very powerful because of how this season you always have to drop your goal right because you don't want to contact the rings so they can put their goal down but still be in contact with the goal itself but not the rings yeah and then that just gives them a head start over their the opponents being able to score rings a little bit faster because they don't have to worry about maybe missing the goal because the mc said the counted down wrong or anything like that and they'll they'll be more prepared than their opponents for that the beginning of the match yeah definitely so i mean all they have to do with a macro right is just they can have an auto program for it to tilt up at the match starts so all they have to do is just drive forwards right and get grab more rings while other teams have to go back up line up their uh back clamp and make sure that the goal is back in its correct position for those rings right which allows them to have much better head start than the other teams and a big advantage absolutely and next up we have a video sent in by 7862h and their robot looks very interesting it looks kind of tall and i feel like it has a resemblance of the in-game robot from tipping point which won worlds uh yeah i mean something very interesting about this spot you can see if they flip the if they switch the direction of their intake then it goes on to kind of a separate looking intake mech where they can just use the the hooks to slap it on which I find very interesting because I haven't seen any teams do that from the front I've seen um, teams use the four bar to do it from the back but not many teams have been trying to yeah, use the hooks like for extra the front. P, right? yeah 
Yeah, I like this design, but the only concern is just the motor uses, right? Because I think they can only have a full motor drive at best. So that's a big concern. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a cool concept, but maybe there's other ways to do it to where you can save motors in order to, and also make it faster because as you can see, it's kind of hard to, to line up the like outtaking. So it's not, it's not as automatic to get it onto the, the wall stick mech and then onto the walls. Yeah. So that might be something they improve on future designs. And next we Which have one? a robot from 225 and here, the first thing I notice is these green wheels. And I feel like if you have the opportunity, right, if you have the option to get those new 3.25 inch wheels, you should definitely get those three new Omnis, right? Because, I mean, as the Omnis go old, the traction decreases and you're not getting all your acceleration, right? And you're not getting the traction, so. One thing I would say, though, is, I mean, uh, having having so much extra stuff on your robot, running 3.25 with the goals weighing upwards of four pounds, I mean, your acceleration might not be, you would have to build very light for your acceleration to be negligible if you're going to run 3.25. I think 2.75, that's what we're going to run. It's with the added weight is probably going to make your robot a lot slower if you run 3.25. Yeah, that is true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we saw that in the previous video there. They were accelerating quite slowly. You can visually see the acceleration, right? So I feel like any teams out there watching, if you have the opportunity to buy those 2.75 inch wheels, you should definitely look into doing that. And that kind of pairs with the Goal Rush mech. I mean, if you can't accelerate very fast, then your Goal Rush mech is not even going to be uh, effective because they can accelerate much quicker than you get to the goal first and then it doesn't really matter that you have that goal rush mech yeah how do you feel about their intake layout this is really weird i i see these this layer this first layer where it can go up and down right but i don't think their high strength shaft intake is connected to that it looks to be just sitting on their drivetrain i don't know if it's fully built yet i mean i would guess yeah because i don't see a chain either i i guess it's not fully done they just wanted to a picture the the mm -hmm. sin kind of looks done but um i mean as soon as they add the chain i i would guess the robot would work it looks like it's just your standard um you have your trap door up there to the four go bar your wall the, the i mean like you intake and then yeah. outtake yeah onto the four bar and then i mean tin tin w uh they have i do like how they have it banded in i don't know i haven't seen a lot of teams do that but i haven't really looked at a lot of cages the i like how they door? have mm -hmm. you, no, no no the um the rings they have here that like kind of yeah they have those yeah. banded in so that way you can't you don't risk the rings falling out and they're a lot more secure and then you can just use the torque of your drive base to overpower those rubber bands very easily yeah right and one more thing is that I feel like they should probably cut these low strength axles. I see, see them sticking out a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're not sticking out past the C channels, but if they're sticking out past the C channels, you definitely want to cut those out, right? Yeah. Also, looking down here, I do see that this bottom brace doesn't stretch across the whole drivetrain. And I feel like if you only have, because I only yeah, see I these two braces, one. right? I see this one right here and I see this one right here. So if you have too little, then... I mean, throughout the competitions and stuff, your robot might start bending in. And we had that happen, actually, at, during states at spin-up. So I feel like if these are the only two you have, definitely want to add a either a high-strength shaft in between here or just another C-channel, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, other than that, it looks fine. Good brain placement, too. Next up, we have 1,000 A's robot sent in by Neo. And the first thing I notice here is a different type of a hook you see a lot of teams are running the standoff plus poly hook and they just have a full poly hook which is i'm guessing molded to the shape of the rings yeah and they kind of talked about this in their fun interview they run they only run one hook which is different than any other intake and they it was because um by the time the hook got to the bottom or the ring was uh scoring on the goal the second hook would already be past the 
the point where it needed to pick up the ring, so it wasn't any faster to run two hooks rather than one. So that's why they just opted for one. Their intake's also unique in the fact that they don't have a pre-roller. It just picks the ring off the ground and then will score it. So that way you don't have to worry about the transition, which a lot of teams have had a lot of trouble with. I know we're working on that right now. Mm -hmm. What do you think? How fast have you seen this type of intake be? Because I feel like the main concern I would have for picking off the ground is just the hook not being able to like grab it properly right because i feel like if you're pushing over it with a flex tool that's a lot more consistent than trying to grip it from under right because i think it can slip off if you're not at the right angle where you're just a little bit too too close or too uh, too far right if you're a little bit too far then i feel like you cannot grab on and that'll waste some time however the main concern that we had with this was that you can't you have a pre-roller lifter to get the top ring on the stack of two which uh is is worse for auto yeah i mean overall it has its upsides and downsides right and one final thing i'd like to mention about this robot is looking at the drivetrain here i feel like it sticks out a little too little on the front which might make it a little tippy towards the front here because i do see a lot of the weight here especially even though with the lift right towards the front and their drivetrain doesn't extend that far right so i mean i feel like if you are looking into this type of drivetrain i would suggest maybe adding let's say anti-rollers right like a either a gear sprocket or just a wheel right an omni wheel in the front yeah absolutely next up we have a robot sensitive by sohel 2915e so now this might not look like the cream of the crop from the outside but we do have some very interesting designs on this robot yes yeah, so they have a very unique uh a redirect mag that I haven't seen many teams use. Here's a video. The intake is on a pivot, so that way uh, when the piston's up, the ring can pass through, and when it's down, it just kind of goes up and back down. However, one issue, I don't I don't know if it was an issue for them, but one issue that I saw possibly arising was not having, like the, the last row of the flex wheels catching the ring instead of it passing back down through. So I don't know if that was an issue for them, but that might be something that uh, could stop this design from working. I mean, with that problem, right? With If that was a problem, I feel like you could add some poly there to just make sure that that row of flex was not going to be contacting, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Overall, good design. I feel like this will be really fast. I think this is going to be a lot faster than the hook redirect, right? And with yeah, a lot absolutely. of people looking into hood intakes, I feel like this is definitely a useful design for adding on to your hood intake robot. And lastly, we have a robot from Liam 1082R himself. So do you want to explain this robot a little bit? Yeah, so we just started on our robot a little bit ago. Um, it's uh, We're going to do two, two rows of flex wheels and then transfer onto the hook so that way it's shorter travel time because the flex wheels will be faster than having it all hooked um our back clamp has some cool cool leverage from the bottom and we can use small pistons in order to get enough tilt uh from from either side and that's pretty much it because that's all the robot there is yeah one thing i did like on this robot is at the very top Right, what you did with the standoffs here and the screw mm-hmm. joint in the middle, right? Just reducing the friction there because it doesn't need to be a low strength shaft or whatever, right? So I do like yeah. that. All right, and if you guys have any robots of yourself of your own that you guys want to be reviewed by us, then just go ahead, join the server down in the description, and leave your robot images or videos into the channel. Thank you.